Huge thanks to these Patreon supporters listed on the screen for helping us support, maintain, and expand ESO University's new website and also supporting our Discord community. If you guys would like to help us as well, definitely check out the Patreon link down in the description below. Really appreciate you guys and have a good time. Hey guys, it's time to enough as and show and I want to talk to you guys about a skill that's being overlooked by a lot of players right now in PvE and there's already a misconception about the skill here and there so let's clarify a couple things and see if it's actually worth running in actual content. The skill we're going to be looking at is going to be Empowering Grasp. It's a Necromancer skill from the uh I believe it's a Bone Tyrant skill line yep and it's actually the it was updated for the Stone Thorn DLC patch. It was actually changed so this morphs in power now lasts for the full 5 second duration rather than being consumed on use. So let's read the tooltip as well. Summon 3 patches of skeletal claws from the ground in front of you. Enemies in the first area are snared by 30% for 5 seconds, immobilized in the second area for 4 seconds, and stunned in the final area for 3 seconds. This can be a bit annoying, especially on places where ads can be stunned and need to be brought in. So, uh... You may have to account for that during raids, such as on Zajasa, the cats. Uh, each area applies minor maim to enemies, which is great, empower to your allies, and enhances the damage and healing of your skeletal mage and spirit mender by 40%. We're, we're, we're going to kind of ignore the uh, skeletal mage and spirit mender part and focus on the empower part. So this means that unlike the item set Gallonway, or whatever other source of empower there is out there, including the major skill passive for empower, you're getting a 40% damage boost to your lie attacks for 5 full seconds every time this empowering grasp skill is cast or applied to you. This means that empower is not consumed, unlike previous sets or scenarios, until those 5 full seconds are up, making this skill an incredibly strong utility skill to boost your group DPS. In a trial environment, we're seeing at about a 5% DPS increase per damage dealer. Just to draw you an example from a couple of Berserk's recent v Mall runs, one on the screen is without Empowering Grasp, and the one is with an okay uptime on Empowering Grasp, about 60-70%. to 70%. Now, how does the skill work? This is where some people are a little bit confused on. After looking at my group's ESO logs, I noticed that there was an inconsistency between how many casts of Empowering Grasps I did, and what the various uptimes on several people were. While each circle of Empowering Grasps, according to its tooltip, has its own effects such as Snare, Immobilization, and Stun, each circle seems to also have a cap of 6 people, meaning with proper group positioning, which is probably already given in groups you want to use a skill with, you can just apply one instance of Empowering Grasp, hitting all of the DPS in one cast, or in the worst case scenario, two casts. Note that if you aim it properly, you can actually hit two circles on a stack of people, meaning theoretically if 11 people are, let's say, stacked in one spot in front of me, and I aim it in such a way that two of the circles uh, overlap on the same group, you can actually hit those two circles on a stack of people, meaning if those 11 people are stacked in one spot and you're at a certain distance to which you use Empowering Grass, you can give all those people Empower for five full seconds with one cast. Now, what role do we use Empowering Grasp on? In my opinion, I think Empowering Grasp is too intrusive to a Magic of Necromancers or a Stamina Necromancers DPS rotation, so I don't really think it's worth the net, net damage loss, but I could be wrong. So basically, most groups, I think, will put this skill on either a Necromancer off tank or main tank, depending on the positioning of the fight who's doing what, or a Necromancer Healer, which sort of goes back to how Magic DPS compositions can be arranged this patch, and if you're curious about raid compositions this patch, definitely check out my Storm, uh, Stone Thorn video on that one. Anyway, that's pretty much it, guys, getting this information out there so you can decide what you want to do with it, how you want to organize using the skill. Uh, thank you so much for watching, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you guys next time.